Greetings, welcome back to the Man Cave. Today we're in for another episode of Man Cave Questions and Answers. We've got four questions today, all coming from the Facebook page. Uh, the first question is from Wilson Boudreau of Lafayette Parish, Louisiana. Wilson asks, having purchased a 22 and a half inch Weber Smoky Mountain with my first very successful cook-in, I now realize that I know little or nothing about the better rubs out there. How does one determine which of those rubs are the best? Well, uh, Wilson, that's pretty simple actually. You uh, just need to try. Uh, try what you can. Uh, I have been a big proponent of making my own rubs and I've enjoyed doing that just through experimenting. Uh, but last night in fact I ordered my first batch of commercial rubs to try and your question actually kind of inspired me to do that because there are a lot of really popular barbecue rubs out there and I've never tried any of them so I made an order of five different four or five different rubs I bought two simply marvelous rubs I bought the sweet seduction and I bought the cherry rub I bought two plowboys rubs I bought the bovine bold and I believe I bought the yard bird and I don't actually write off the top of my head here I don't remember what the fifth rub I ordered was it was one of the big papa smokers rubs but just buy a couple of different rubs and try them and don't just try them on their meat or on the meat you're cooking. Try it, try it on your fingertip, right on your tongue to see what the flavor of the rub's like. And try several of them, uh, you know, and see what you think. Uh, you, you don't, you're not going to get really uh, bad rubs if you, if you go buy commercial rubs. These rubs are all track proven and a lot of them have a lot of wins, a lot of big barbecue competitions. So try out several of them and uh, let us know what you think. Our second question today comes from Scotty Hopkins in Havelock, North Carolina. Scotty says, I, I just ordered an amazing pellet smoker and the first thing I want to do is smoke several blocks of cheese. How long do I need to smoke them and what would the best kind of smoking wood be? Uh, how long do they need to cure in the refrigerator and do you have any other advice on this? I've smoked cheese several times and the Amazing Pellet Smoker is an excellent tool for doing it because it doesn't produce much heat during the smoking process. So uh, you're going to have good luck with that. Uh, the first part of your question is how long do I need to smoke them and what would be the best kind of smoking wood. My cheese smoking endeavors in the past I go two to three hours. Uh, I don't want to go much longer than that. Uh, you can oversmoke cheese just like you can oversmoke anything else. And I also like the the lighter intensity woods for cheese. I've used apple and I've used cherry for uh, smoking cheese, and both of them do a beautiful job. And the third part of your question is how long do they need to cure in the fridge? Uh, that's subjective. Uh, I like to let mine go for a minimum of four weeks. But what I suggest, if this is your first time smoking cheese, take one of your blocks of cheese and cut it into about six pieces. So you've got six smaller pieces there and you wrap those individually when you're done. Taste one of them after two days. Taste the other one, taste another one after a week and then uh, taste each individual block, your remaining four blocks, uh, four to five days apart. And that way you're going to get a good idea of how this cheese develops as it ages. And smoked cheese, if you taste it right after you've smoked it, it tastes horrible. It's, uh, it tastes like something I would imagine uh, like licking a, a dirty ashtray. It's just it really is terrible and it takes a while for that flavor to develop so like I said four four weeks for me is a minimum and it's 
you know, it's really good at the six week point. I know it's hard to sit there and look at that stuff for that long, but give it a try and, and do the test. Like I said, take it, take a little bit, you know, over time intervals so you will know how that cheese develops over time and what the flavor profile is going to be like. Uh, any other advice I have on that is you, all you've got to do is be careful of your temperature and whatever you're smoking it in. Try not to let the internal temperature of your smoking container like your acorn or whatever you might be planning to smoke this in, try not to let it get over about 70 degrees. You don't want that cheese to sweat while it's smoking. So. Good luck with that. Let me know how it goes. Uh, I'll be interested in hearing your uh, results with that amazing pellet smoker you bought. The maize version of that that uses the pellets is the best option for smoking cheese. It'll produce a good amount, a good amount of smoke and it won't uh, produce an excessive amount of heat. So I'm looking forward to hearing your results there. Our third question is from Brent. Uh, Diller or Dialer, I hope I pronounced that properly, from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Brant says, uh, should only fattier cuts of meat be used on a barbecue slash Kamado? Could you do a leg of lamb or would it be too lean? Uh, would you need to inject? Uh, Brant, you can cook any kind of meat you want on any kind of smoker or any kind of Kamado grill. Well, once again, as long as you can control the temperature where you want it, it doesn't matter what the fat content of the meat is, because if you can cook it in an oven, you can cook it on a grill or smoker as well. You just want to work with the same temperature guidelines that you would anywhere else. Uh, certain cuts, there are different types of meat. Your typical barbecue meats like Boston butt, brisket, and ribs, those meats all have a high amount of connective tissue. It's not as much about the fat as it is the connective tissues when it comes to how long you need to smoke the meat. If you're cooking a, a cut of meat that does not have a lot of connective tissue, uh, it won't take as long to get to your internal temperatures because you're not having to break that down to make a tough piece of meat tender. So, yeah, you can do a leg of lamb. You can do... Uh, a London broil, you can do any kind of any kind of meat you want. So what's important to know is what the guidelines are for cooking that type of meat and what your internal target temperature needs to be. And those are the things you need to go by more so than time or anything else. Is that that target internal temperature is important. So yeah, you can cook anything you want. Don't limit yourself to fattier cuts of meat. And whether or not you want to inject it is up to you because injection is something you do to modify a flavor profile. Oops, sorry for the little glitch there. We had to do a quick battery replacement in the camera. But Brent, like I said, injecting is is for flavor profile modification more so than maintaining the moisture level in your meat. Uh, injecting will uh, help a little bit with the moisture level but it, like I said it's primarily for a flavor profile modification so just keep that in mind and uh, show us what you're gonna cook you'll have a good time with it cook whatever kind of meat you want our final fourth and final question today comes from Robert Kelly in Mesquite Texas Robert asks do you have any tips on smoking beef chuck roast uh, a beef chuck roast is a lot like a piece of brisket. It's a it's a good, excellent piece of meat to throw on a smoker, and you are going to want to cook it to a high internal temperature. It's going to be well done, like brisket, and you're going to shoot for you know a 195 to 200 degree internal temperature, and that uh, chuck roast is going to be pull apart tender. It's going to be really good. I've cooked several of them, and. Uh, they're easy to do. You would season it, season the outside of it with a, a similar rub like you'd use on a brisket. You'd want to use a savory rub, uh, one that's not too high in sugar content. Uh, so give it a try. It makes makes excellent pulled beef. People make pulled beef just like they make pulled pork. Or you know you can uh, use that beef in a pot roast. One of the chuck roasts that I smoked. Uh, 
I smoked it to an internal temperature of about 160 degrees and then I cut it up into cubes and put it in a pot roast and finished it in a Dutch oven on the smoker with uh, all the standard fare that you'd put with a pot roast and it was really good so yeah there's nothing uh, extraordinary about smoking uh, chuck roast lots of people do it so give one a try and let us know how it goes so that's going to wrap up this week's issue of questions and answers uh, I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to post some questions I just wish I had time to get to all of them so come back uh, to my Facebook page I'll put the link on the screen here and uh, later on in the week towards Sunday probably I'll post another opportunity for questions so until next time Man Cave Meals.